Hey everyone, thanks for joining our show today. I just wanted to take a moment and say that I have a special announcement to make. I'm proud to say that our show is now sponsored by Patriot Mobile. Yes, it is. It is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Patriot Mobile is a company that shares our values and supports the causes that we care about, such as honoring our veterans, which you know is near and dear to my heart, helping first responders, and defending our constitutional rights. For me to learn more about Patriot Mobile and their amazing offers, you can visit my website that is with them. It is patriotmobile.com forward slash graceful. Or you can call them. And don't forget to mention this show, Graceful. When you sign up, you'll get a special discount. They'll remove the activation fee from the bill right off the bat. So check us out and remember to put in the code graceful. Now, let's get it back to today's topic. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Break with God, the podcast where we take a moment to pause and just connect with God and each other. So in each episode, we'll hear from guests who will share their testimony of who God is in their life. So whether you're at home, at work, or just simply on the go, join us for Coffee Break with God and let His presence fill your cup. Hey everybody, welcome to the Graceful Warrior Podcast. Hey, we are sitting down with a great guest that I have for you today. This is Coffee Break with God. And I have an up and coming Christian artist that is fabulous. I had the great honor of sitting down with him and interviewing him. And man, he is such a joy. So I want to welcome Julius Adams to the show. Hello, Julius. Hey, how you doing today, Monica? I'm doing great. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, good, good. I'm glad to have you. Hey, Julia. So um, you are this up and coming Christian singer. Um, give us a little bit of background. Like, where are you from? How did you decide to get into the music industry? What drew you to this? Um, I'm first of all, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. Um mm-hmm. A nice, it's a, it's a small town, but a very nice town. Uh, good people. Uh, I was around a lot of great musicians around here. Um, got a chance to uh, really get influenced in music from the deposition of just being around a lot of great musicians like my dad. And then I went to school with a lot of um, our band teacher, uh, David uh, Kaiser, was really a, a great band teacher at Dunlap. Taught me a lot. Um, then also uh-huh. my... Uh, uh, other maestro uh, teacher was uh, Ed Kayser, which was another great jazz piano player. I learned a lot from him. And those people influenced me a lot to uh, want to play music and become who I was as to um, the songwriter and the singer I, I am today. Uh huh. So is that your, your main, I mean, like, do you have a favorite genre of music? Is it jazz or are you out oh. there with, hey, I like some soul. I like some, you know, what do you like? <laughs> I love, oh. I love jazz. Um, I love soul. I love gospel. Um, I love rock and roll too, though, because I uh-huh. listen to a lot of different songs there too. Um, so I'm all around. So it's like I love a lot of songs. I heard a lot of music uh, growing up. So mm-hmm. growing up in the uh, '80s era. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so your '80s era. So you're you must be like what uh, Andre Crouch. Yeah, well, yeah. The Andre Crouch, yeah. you know. The Winans. The Winans. Yeah, the Winans. Eddie Patty, the Gaither family. There uh, you go. <laughs> so, so the glory days of TV. Yeah, you're well rounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, sure. so, so, um, so you've been raised around the music industry and stuff like that. Um, uh, was it always, um, for lack of a better word, because I cannot think of one right now, were you always raised around like the religious concept of music or was there an outside pulling of getting into other music besides Christian? Yeah. Um, I, I was, I was basically raised around a lot of Christian music, but my, you know, my mom gave me a lot of music to listen to. So I listened to a lot of staple sisters at first mm-hmm. because they were gospel and they were also R and B. And then, uh-huh. uh, 
I wasn't listening to that. Then I was listening to a lot of Motown. So you listen oh, to yeah. my as my dad was listening to that. Also, it was, and then, <laughs> and listen to that. You're listening to the wine, the Winans, uh, the Walter Hawkins family, uh, mm-hmm. Andre Brown, Sandy Patty, uh, Gaither family. And mm-hmm. then, like growing up, you know, um, <laughs> the Benny Hens, You know, you, you had a chance to listen to like uh, Brock and then the other guys. That's something. Then you also had yeah. Nani McClurkin later on. So you listen. You know, it was yeah. I was all gospel, R and B, jazz. Contemporary R and B, all uh-huh. type of, and those songs just made me want to grow. Like listening to those songs uh, gave me so much inspiration to write and to mm-hmm. make great music too, and to get around mm-hmm. great musicians also to learn mm-hmm. how to, uh, you know, put great music together. You know, right? Something, right. You know that I know will be very representing representing God in the right way format with right. you know, high skill. You know, to go along with great music so people could really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. So were you, uh, I mean, you don't hear of stories like this. This is what really got me. When you and I had talked the other day, it was like, man, so many times you hear stories of people that have grown up around either you're a PK kid, you know, or you grow up in a Christian home. But then when you go your own separate ways, I get a lot of stories of people going, hey, I walked away from God. I did my own thing, right. you know, and. But it sounds like, I mean, tell me a little bit about you. You shared with me a little bit about it. And I wanted to let the listeners hear about how tight you were with your mom and the fact of, cause you, we don't hear of that these days. It's always this clash of, you know, right. kids and moms. You know, I, what made it different for you? What made it different was um, my mom didn't just, I'll say this sometime. With parents, sometimes they don't give you the truth about a lot of mm-hmm. different and my mom was one of those people that would give me the truth daily but also mm-hmm. let me explore that truth as well so that I could grow and know different things about the world and understand why mm-hmm. I needed God and why I needed to have God in everything that I've done not just mm-hmm. uh some things but all things because sometimes mm-hmm. people they don't believe in God but they don't realize that God believes in them and mm-hmm. they don't have a, a connection with him to grow because they feel like I need to step out and this is going to be different from this. The church does uh, give us sometimes the wrong influence as to how life really is out here, how to grow. But mm-hmm. God, that way, God wants, he says in the Bible to explore, you need to explore, you need to learn. And then that way you can understand why you need God, why you should wake up every day. Um, as you said, you know, why righteousness means something outside of not living. Cause you know, too much of anything can, can hurt you. So right. you need to discipline yourself in every area. God wants you to enjoy this world. He does. Like my mom used to tell me, he wants you to enjoy the world. He wants you to enjoy the goodness and the fatness of the land. Meet people, talk to people. But you also need to understand how to operate it and work in it as well. So right. you can have enough fortitude to move forward and do great things in life. And yeah. also where you can um, evolve. Sometimes we don't get that because, you know, like... um a lot of people go through a lot of different things. Like one time I heard two great uh, announcers. They said, you know, you never know a story behind a story. So you don't know what right. people are Because it's always right. something. Everything is always outlooked. And you mm-hmm. can see the, the um, you know, what people, you can see it up close. So you're like, wow, this person's going through all this stuff. But you really don't know what that person's been through or what's mm-hmm. society. And, that, and that's why, you know, 2024 has been like almost a year of truth. You see so many people telling on each other. You see all this stuff. <laughs> Everything coming out. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> telling on each other. The year of tattling. <laughs> a lot of years because, you know, truth is always going to catch up to that, to the lies or the <laughs> hidden stuff. My mom wasn't really like that. She was always just constantly giving you the truth. Like my mom used to pray this prayer all the time for me and my dad. She would say, we don't want to die without knowing. Don't right. like, let us dive without not knowing the truth. Don't let it, you know, <laughs> see the truth and know the truth to see people for who they were, to see work to help people, you know, stuff like that. So I would say that's why our relationship was so great because it wasn't just like live for God, live for God. And, and that was, that was live for God, but it was like, you need to see yourself fail so you can see why you need God. And I think mm-hmm. that wow. a lot of people are like, they might be at church a lot 
and they need to step out. And when they when they do step out, they can see like, oh man, I I really need that. And then they can also understand um, the values that God is bringing to them and what those scriptures really mean. Why you should know the word for yourself. Not that it's just <laughs> a religious thing. And I think that sometimes music music focuses too much on religion. It makes us mm-hmm. like praise and all this other stuff when. Praise is really a lifestyle. Music is just something that God has given us. But mm-hmm. honor God with your daily life to know um, if I'm going through something or, if, you know, how to get out of it through that word, through that prayer, through that belief, having faith. Um, that's what God really wants to see you accomplish. And and, and mm-hmm. that way your life is going to be great. You don't see great days. And I feel like we, we fail a lot because we're trying too hard and uh, we don't realize how easy it, it can be. I mean, I mean, I know it's hard for addictions and different things of that, na- that narrative because mm-hmm. if you get caught, man, it's hard to get out. It is, but um, if you believe in God and you let God and you let know that God believes in your you and He's there and that magic is there for you to believe that, and because you can feel it, I know a lot of people feel like they can't. It's it's there. You just have to accept it in your heart and jump into it. And I feel that you know sometimes we can get thrown off with religion a lot, and oh that's yeah, not, you know, and we can be passive on what God is trying to say. Yeah. I mean, I mean, geez, you said so much there. I mean, my mind was just going, yep, boom, boom, boom. You know, <laughs> who you got with you, Julius? Who you got? Bring her on. I'm talking too much. I'm just talking too much. I'm telling you right now. I'm <laughs> no. But, you know, even what you're saying, even what you're saying is, you know, where you were saying that we step out and sometimes the religion gets gets a hold of us a lot. And we don't get to see who God really is, you know? And I think even if we have that moment of going, I'm going through this valley of the shadow of death in life, so to speak, you know, whatever life brings in our way and we're walking through that, it really is going, you know what? Trusting in the Lord as we step out and going, I have to learn how to trust God in this situation that I'm in. Yeah, you know, right. is impactful. And then just even the music. I mean, if we were to even look back at Old Testament, you know, God had all of the 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 musicians out front when Israel marched, wherever wherever they went. It was like before the battle, they had the musicians out front. Right. And um, it is bringing that atmosphere of praise. And I mean, you said it so good. It's like, musicians today that are so-called Christian, you know, you listen to some of their songs and it's just one or two verses. And then they repeat over and over and over in that course. You're just like, what in the world? And then we got to sing it four or five times. But, you know, I listened to, um, I listened to three of your songs and one of them that really stuck out with me was, was healer. And that's yeah. your up and coming song that you've got coming out right now. Um, um, I know our listeners haven't heard this song. I w- I'm going to, I've got your, your audio. I want to go ahead and, and play eventually for our listeners, but tell us a little bit about how Healer came about. Oh man. Oh, Healer was a song I wrote a long time ago. Um, it was something, it was really a song that me and my mom had made. And um, I was going back and forth with her. But I was writing it because my mom was a great songwriter. We used to go back and forth about writing songs because we, we wrote a lot of songs for church. But I wrote mm-hmm. this song because, um, uh, because I was looking at how God could heal people from different things. Also myself, when I was growing up, I had a real bad situation with my sinuses and I had an allergic reaction. So I had to take a lot of Benadryl because mm-hmm. I was taking a lot of Benadryl. I shouldn't have been taking Benadryl because <laughs> I, was, I don't want my hole to shut up in my throat. And, I'm, mm-hmm. and I was one of those kind of kids that had... Uh, Really bad allergic. Like I couldn't go around uh, pine trees. Uh, um, I was allergic. Real to sensitive chocolate. system. Yeah, very sensitive, and uh-huh. um, especially between the ages of eighteen and twenty-two, twenty-four. Wow. Really, um, I was having like a lot of trouble with my allergy stuff, so I was buying a lot of allergy stuff, and it was just like it just switched over. It, I was always an outside person, so I'd mm-hmm. always been before. You know, I would go out and. um go outside but i would always kind of like um stuff about me, especially the grass <laughs> so like oh, I wow have, i have trouble with that and so i tried many different things trying to try and get mm-hmm. rid of it 
Mm-hmm. And uh, when I started getting older, it was really starting to get, it started to bother me. I would like, I couldn't even stand next to like pineapple, uh, pine tree without throwing up. Yeah. Or something like that, right? So uh, I began. So you to, got, you got out, out of doing a lot of outside chores, I guess, then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No yeah. mowing lawns. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You never buy me pants. <laughs> <laughs> you're right but i would say do going i got healed from that um, wow from the oil and i got some other different remedies that that start to heal me and mm-hmm. god began because he started to show me different ways to get out and then also right. seeing other things take place in other people um some people in our ministry and as long as one i wanted to write something to god about me and my healer because he had begun to touch me and different things and um so i wrote the song and I wrote the song in dedication to God from being to heal you just from sickness, mental illness, heartbreak, financial loss, just in a lot of different areas. Because God don't just heal us from sicknesses. He heals us. He, he, he can heal your broken heart just from a lot mm-hmm. of different things. So the song was uh, made like, I'm going to say probably about 15 years ago. But I decided oh, wow. to do it because I finally got the right people around me to help me um, come up with the right plans and the right sound for it. So then I was like, okay, this is great. And I got with the greatest bass player, greatest drummer, greatest horn section. These guys are phenomenal. You had uh, Shrey Reed, Calvin Rogers, uh, Robert Sears on this, helping me put this all together. And wow. uh, Chris back and injury and Nicole management. They they sat down for and helped me really put this thing together from that to the video. So it was just awesome putting together. But it was a song that I wrote because I knew how great God, how great a healer God can be. Yeah, he, when you uh, when you listen to him and he gives you direction to what to do next. Yeah, yeah, healer. It's like the way you said it. He heals us from any. It doesn't have to be the sicknesses. You know, it could be in our finances. It could be, you know, car problems. It could be. He just handles it all. Is yes, he does. Amazing, he you does. know. So out of your three songs, you have healer, and I think the other one was coming like I believe. I think it's called I believe. Faith. I have faith. I have faith. And then, uh, so out of your three songs, which one do you favor the most and why? I would say probably, I don't know if it's the best song, but I, I like I Have Faith a lot. But uh-huh. God, like, I mean, not, not God, like, but Healer. Healer is one of my favorite songs that I wrote, but I Have Faith is really great because it's a song about belief and knowing that God is going to be there for you. So it was it's really a good song to me. I wrote that song for my by myself, for myself, because it was just one of those songs where, um, you know, how what faith really is a substance of and, mm-hmm. um, and, and why you need it. So it's, it's mm-hmm. one of those kind of situations because uh, I believe faith is something that is, uh, we, we, me and you had talked a couple of days ago, but I mean, one thing we did discuss was um, experience. I think mm-hmm. faith experience because you're stepping out to do something to right. uh, to see what you can get from it. And you find out that God is there. And I think that oh, is, yeah. that's the fun thing about exploring. I um, feel like the faith can be activated without exploring. Right. You know, yeah, sometimes you can jump. And that's great, too. And I heard people say that. But I think some, and, and that you should. But I think exploring creates that faith that you need. And not to stay in one spot. Whether, and then I do want the same things, either. So it's like you do do different stuff to find out, uh, to have a new refreshing part of your life where you can start seeing what faith is. I think sometimes, that's why I say at church, sometimes it can be a little uh, hard to use faith, love, hope, um, grace, mercy, forgiveness. Right. Enough experience of it. Because that's what I feel like as as human beings we miss is experience. So experience. You can't really know what somebody else, what they come through or what they feel like until mm-hmm. you experience it. And I know a lot of people say that, but we're, a lot of people are afraid to experience. So th- that yeah. can make people real faithless. So when you see, when I see great people, I don't look down upon them. When I see people at the top, I don't look down upon them. Regardless of how they did or they got there, they, they really step out on their faith. And sometimes those people have more faith than you would know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, the experience too, you know, I have learned just even in my own walk of, you know, that moment that you step out and you put your, your, your foot in the lake, you know, it's on ankle deep and you're like, okay, 
I'm going to trust you for this one thing, you know? Right. And then next thing you know, it's like God answers that. And you're like, Whoa, okay. Right. I'm going to go out to calf deep, you know? <laughs> right. And you're like, so I, I'm going to trust you for this. And it's right. that it is exactly. It's that building that experience with the Lord. And so we can look back and go, man, you did this, you did this, you did this. this. And I'm already at waist deep right now. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And and it's a matter of keep going, keep going right. to be right. able to not touch. You know, there's that one song about oceans deep to be able to go out there and not to be able to touch the bottom because we know that the Lord will lift us up and we yeah. won't drown. Yeah. You, you know, right. so um, you um, you have a story that I was like, I got to have you say this story. Um about your fishing expedition. I was like, man. <laughs> so you have a story for the, for those listening, for those fishermen or fisher girls, whatever. Yeah, Julius has a story about this fish. And oh my gosh, God told him to go fishing. Tell me, was it a week straight, bro? It was like a week. It was a year of fishing. It was a year of fishing. Right. A year. A year. <laughs> It was a year of fishing, and God had well, – well, we were going through something because I need to – God was putting me together on some situations, and mm-hmm. I was going fishing, like, every time I could, basically, for a year. When Every time I had free time, I would go fishing. When, and God was waking me up, telling me to go fishing. I was going out there every day, like, fishing every day. And uh, he told me to catch this flathead catfish. I had never caught one ever in my life, and so I pursued it for, like, a whole year. And um, mm-hmm. when it finally came – um, I was excited because God gave me, I only wanted to be 60 pounds. That's exactly what I prayed for. But in the Bible, God says he'll give you a seemingly abundantly more and you can ask your thing. Exactly. And so he gave me a fish that was 73 pounds. Oh my gosh. And it was amazing. I have a picture. Um, yes. Let's so, see it. You know, let's I see this. It because I mean, who would So were you, were you even a fishing guy at the time when the Lord told you to go no, catch this thing? I was a fisherman, but I uh-huh. wasn't like, great with fishermen. But when I caught this fish, I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, picture. my gosh. That thing is huge. Yes. Giant. Okay. That's and giant. Mind you guys, I'm six foot three, so you know that's a big fish because I'm a big man. That's a big fish. But it was a big fish. It was one of my best catches. But if God gave me that fish, like, for real. And it was just a great experience. I learned a lot from that, and I applied it to my life. And it blessed uh-huh. me a lot of different ways because I learned how to, to go up and and make myself better. Because when I was fishing, I was fishing with the wrong reel, the wrong rod, the wrong hooks, the wrong stuff. But all going through that for about a year and getting the right reel, the right rod, it showed me how to apply certain things in my life. Like you need more quality on this area or you need to have a better stuff right this way. And those areas I wasn't getting, that I wasn't getting better in. When I had that experience, it showed me, well, I should be more thankful or I should be happier about this situation. Or, you know, I, mm-hmm. one, somebody wrote a great testimony a couple of days ago and they were like, what do you need? Like, how great is your life? Like, you need money, but basically, but what else do you need? And I was like, nothing. I, I, yeah, I want mm-hmm. God to bless me with more money, but my, right now my life is great. <laughs> you know, and, mm-hmm. I'm, and, I, and, that taught, and that fish taught me to be more thankful about life, about people about places, about things, and um, to be patient more, too, because I was very mm-hmm. patient with that fish because I was trying to catch it every day. And every day I thought I had it, but I didn't. <laughs> and then finally when it did come, it was, a, it was a great day when it did come, but when it came, it came right at the right time, and it came right when I needed it to. And uh, mm-hmm. I would tell everybody, like, just be patient. God's on, I know people always say, like, God's on his way, be patient, great things are going to, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But if you don't hold to your faith and your prayer and your belief, and you don't know. Like sometimes you do have faith and belief, but you need to know. That's the part yeah. about it. And when you know, that's when it's going to work. Faith mm-hmm. is not just belief; it's knowing. Like you know, you mm-hmm. you when you get into something and you're working it, I don't care what it is. You know something's going to happen because you're like, man, I'm getting better and better at this thing. So you know you're building something that's going to go. The faith mm-hmm. is there, but that faith is really knowing. And once you get that yeah. that that mystical knowing, then then that creation of what that thing is going to pop up. I don't care what you want to say; it's going to pop up. Faith creates what you want. 
It's not just belief. It creates what you need and what you want. So you should really stay strong on your faith because it's knowing what you thought was going to happen. Um, it, it, it puts it into actual ex- existence. And you're like, man, this what I was believing for is finally here. So that that's what it is. So faith yeah. is, is knowing. It is belief. But but basically, it basically is about you, you know, man, you know this thing's going to happen. You just don't know when it's going to happen. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. God knows when your pa- your patience will guide you to that thing if you just wait on it. So don't just rush. Just believe. Yeah. But yeah. That, I believe it, that belief is like the, the what you call the appetizer of the dinner. But mm-hmm. <laughs> faith is the actual. Because <laughs> then you know. The actual you know, meal. Yeah, it's actually clear. Eventually, you know, you get so. That's why I say I like the song. I have faith, and that song. That's why I wrote that song too because of that fish. Yeah, I think a faith. You know, faith is. Um, I should tell my listeners we did this deep dive about faith and the shield of faith and everything, and yeah. and faith is that action word because it actually it's one thing to believe, yes, like you're saying, but it's another thing to know. And to know. it's like okay. Then, and my mind automatically goes to remember the old um, Raiders of the Lost Ark series. Yeah, and there was there was the one. Remember when um, Harrison Ford and um, uh, what's his name, Dad, the Dad, um, Sean Connery, they yeah. had to have hope and faith, and they had to walk that inv- across that invisible yeah. bridge. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think of. Like that's faith. Is like you have to step out and trust God at times. Yeah. And then there's the times where you have to have faith and go, this is where I'm supposed to just sit in peace and let God have his way in the situation, you know? Right. And um, cause there's times where he just says, Hey, hands off. I'm going to take care of this. There's other times where he says, I need you to walk and right. you got to go across that bridge. You know? Right. Well, that's a great example too, Monica. Man, that was a really great one because I mean, you could a, see it. Uh, yeah, that was a great example, and I forgot about that. That was really good. That was a great <laughs> next thing you're gonna come up with a song. <laughs> yeah. Look, walk across that <laughs> that invisible oh. bridge. <laughs> right, yeah, that's it. Walk Go ahead. That right. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> you're right. <laughs> Look at the I know. Who, I know where that line came from. Him and I talked. That's gonna be a new song, Monica. That's gonna be there a new you go. Song. <laughs> faith, that faith bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, or bridge of faith. I don't know. Monica, <laughs> <laughs> for real, that's a really good that's a good one for real. That I mean, it is. It is just your, you know, it's a bridge of faith, and and it's. What is on the other side? That's yeah. the victory. That's where the Lord is, you know, because yeah. the yeah. battle be, belongs to the Lord, but it's for oh. us to step out and get across, you oh, know, yeah. and the valleys down below, right. you know, and, um, um, but so you, um, you are in the process of like working on an album or are you putting together some songs? Yes, um, I got three new songs dropping out this year, and I'll be releasing an album by 2025. But I will have like some, I will have like three or four songs out this year, and I'm working on those right now, and video also with that. So I'll be, nice. I'll be doing some work here, and I'll be doing some performances and stuff like that this year. I'm gonna try to get at least about 40 to 50 performances in this year. Oh my gosh! So I'm trying to get the work immediately to get the mm-hmm. uh, start singing and performing. I'm really excited about this year. 2024 has been great. Um, I'm I'm really thankful for your podcast. Um, this is this is the awesome um, platform as well. I appreciate mm-hmm. your uh, you know your wisdom. Yeah, you gave me so much wisdom yesterday. You're so full. You're such a great woman of God as well. So oh, um, thanks. Talking to you. Um, this is a great a great place, a great show to be. And I've heard some other interviews too, and they were awesome, awesome. So this is you know this is a great platform, and I'm you know I want to see this grow. And I see you going. Uh-huh. Uh, this is this is awesome, and I appreciate you having me on here today too. I appreciate it, Julius. I wanna um I wanna have you back when um uh, your album's released, you know, oh. and um uh, maybe bring the guys. We can meet the guys, have them oh. come on the show, and oh. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a podcast. You can do anything. Yeah, 
And yeah, do we could do anything. We could schedule it and later on this year if you want, and next month, awesome. don't matter. You know, yeah. I, mean, I want to be here, Monica. I want to be here. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to, when I get done doing some more stuff, I'm coming right back here. Who would? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, really? yeah. So, you're saying like 50, 40, 50 um, showings. Are you talking nationwide or you just staying at home in Illinois? I want to go. I'm probably going to do the Midwest, most of it. Uh-huh. A couple places mm-hmm. I can go to, like, um, it's some places in California, some places in New York. Some I'm probably gonna try to just do like the Midwest, New York, uh-huh. and LA because my management and that's what she has, so she would know. Uh-huh. Those so we'll just try to yeah try those areas out um, and get most of that stuff done. So I'm excited about that and uh-huh. um, get close to 50 shows, but I know for sure we'll, we'll get probably about 30 to 40. Yeah, yeah, there for sure. But well, let, you know, let um. Let me know whenever you're getting ready to go on tour to any one of these places. Keep, you know, your agent has my contact info. Oh, you yeah, know, sure. if you are going, yeah, give us give us where you're going, you know, and that way we can put it out there for people because we have everybody listening all over the U.S. And right. so if they want to show up and support you, then, hey, that's that's what we're here for. That's what the podcast is for, to help you. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, yes. So um with still with uh, soul searching in your in your albums and your mom are close, you've got these songs coming out, you got a great ba- band, great management team. Sounds like you just have a really heart for the Lord and want to reach the community and yeah. you know, reaching the lost and reaching like we talked about the other day. You're really wanting to reach both the the church. And reach the unsaved in a way that hasn't been done before. Right. I want to. Because because we, like you and I were saying, is that, you know, a lot of the Christian music out there is just so repetitive and just so, it's not from the heart. You know, God asks us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And we're supposed to be. And that's, I feel like what's happened is that. It's becoming more so. Well, it's on a downturn because, and it's it's really. I mean, nobody wants anything to do with it. It's, it's on a downturn because a lot of people start trying to make it like a a click type of thing, and that's cool. Like mm-hmm. if that's what they want to do, they can do that. It's not going, but it's not going to surmise anywhere because people are not going to listen to stuff that's just not new. It's the same thing. It's repetitive, and it's not. It's not of God. It's not even godly anymore. It might as well be right. secular. Um, because what it is is that it's just a pretend form of gospel. And here's the thing: everybody's song is gonna be different. Like everybody's not gonna be hooping and hollering and yelling their own tracks and doing yeah. the same album songs that you always hear. I mean, mm-hmm. it'll be different. Um, God says, "Sing a new song unto me," and that should be daily. Exactly. But that's not what you yes. see. I think people becoming. I, I think anybody. Okay, but this is my personal opinion about anybody. I think anybody's uh-huh. crazy to become what they call a superstar because that's not realistic. From a standpoint, right. of this because that's not where the world is going. The world is not is not is not that. And then I would say that, like, especially in gospel music, how can you be a superstar if you say you serve God? No exactly. You can sing songs and make money doing music, and you should. That's what I question. But mm-hmm. what happens with gospel music is that it's the funny part is that people, you know, they put that much time, that much effort in it because after a while it becomes like caught. <laughs> it's not God anymore. That's your caught. And and it's yeah. not and, and then on top of that, like you're not meeting any new people. It's not no new artists. It's just the same thing over and over again. And then yeah. they wonder why no one's listening because it's the same thing over it's like it's repetitive. They don't even yeah. do that in secular music. You hear new artists that's coming out all the time. And oh and yeah. Gospel music is the same thing, it's the same illustration and it's the same type of music. So yes. that's the issue that's there. So I felt that making healer or just any other song like I mean, it's just it's just making something new. It's nothing to be ashamed yeah. of, but it's very clickish. That's and that's mm-hmm. why people that do gospel music they turn over to doing secular, not because they want to. It's just open. Mm-hmm. It's just open. Yeah, like you can do it. But in in, sec, in gospel music, they're just well, anybody can become a, a major gospel artist now because there's no platform. Because like most of or, the show, yeah. Or they take that platform and it's like, instead of using it for God's kingdom, 
Now mm-hmm. it's like about me and money and power. And I, I and, it, and, yeah. it, and that part is crazy because what I'm saying is that it doesn't work like that. Right. And that's not very, supposed to. <laughs> right, it's not. Not supposed to. And that's why it's falling off because let's say there was a great minister, even when preaching was on, let's say there was a great minister in Michigan or there was one in Alaska or there's mm-hmm. somebody had a word in, in Canada. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that person because it's all cliquish. And, and, mm-hmm. But here's what I learned. If people build their own thing, that's great. They said their own thing, that's great. But just because you're doing it doesn't mean other people are not doing it either. And it has to be a knowledge. That's what makes us have a great world is that we share with one another and that we build with one another and that mm-hmm. we, we do things together. And if you do that kind of stuff, it just poses, it builds higher and higher and higher and higher because somebody's a part of something. I love shows that like The Voice at least, I mean, it's something new every week. And that's right. what it has to be. But in gospel and in tradition and religion, like we were talking about just at church, they, they, they stick to the same things. Mm-hmm. And that's and, and and most of it's not even biblical, right? So right. that's exactly a, right. So if it's not even biblical, how could God be a part of it? It's a business, and I'm not even saying it's a business because the sad part about it is not making any money. So it's not business. Right. You just doing it for the faint of heart now. You yeah. doing this whole yeah. deal, something that don't even work, and we just and everybody's just like, oh, okay, and they're just like, well, yeah, we we, we got this going, and, and nobody can just those people, uh-huh. those people, whatever you brought there. The world doesn't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not because people hold them out of the world. You're just not doing anything like that. I remember when uh, people knew who uh, Carlton Pearson was. People knew who Benny Hill was. People mm-hmm. knew a lot of people. They even knew some gospel singers. They knew, you know, some people that are out there. You don't know who's out there, do they? You don't even know yeah. who they are. Because it's so, uh, you know, held back um, unto what they want to do. People have to open their eyes more to God's will, his way. That's why I like what your show do. I like these new podcast shows there because it's more openness there. And mm-hmm. even for people to hear the, this new truth and new new uh, stuff that's there. And God's going to go with it. This show's going to prosper. And, and other shows like this are going to prosper because it's newness. It's new. That's all it yeah. is. It's, new. it's newness. Yeah. And I love it. It's fresh. It's fresh. It is, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's even for me, you know, is I'm like the older generation from you, you know. It, but it's like even for me to listen to um the the modern day Christian music today, I sit there and I listen to it and I'm just like you know, there was the whole thing, the whole thing with elevation that came out, the whole thing with Bethel music that came out, all of that stuff. I would start listening to some of their songs. And I would start looking into the background of some of these singers and you would find that they were either at parties where there was alcohol or girls and all this stuff, you know, it's like they may come and sing all of these Christian songs, but what their life is doing is not pleasing to the Lord. And then you have all these young kids that are like, ah, you know, at their concerts and you're just like, how is this praising God? You know? it, well, see, that's what I'm saying. And that's not even, because like we both said, and this is the scariest part, is that we, praising God is a lifestyle. And mm-hmm. that praise is a lifestyle. Praise is not music and jumping on, running around church or people, you know, this stuff. On that's, stage, I, yeah. You know, go to a concert and enjoy yourself and listen to music. I think that they what they're doing, like I said before, is like a caught thing where it's about them. Because it's not mm-hmm. about God. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel the spirit yeah. when you're there. No one should feel like that about you. And no one's hating. Right. No one's hating. You know what you said? That is not hate. That's just reality. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and stop doing that. Oh, well, Julie, somebody's hating or, or this person, Eric or Greg, or this per- this person's hating. No, we're not. We're just telling you what it is. And, yeah. And you know, it's, I have to stop. Um, and sometimes it's just that. And that's the thing I don't like also about the new you know, these young people or, you know, how people are just saying this stuff, like, it's not hating. I'm just telling you the truth. It's not hot. Mm-hmm. You guys are only doing it for a formality because if, if it, cause you guys want to do something that's say this is a clickish thing, but it's mm-hmm. not something that we all can accept. I remember back in the 80s and the 90s, like, how is it the fact that in the 80s and the 90s, especially in the 80s and the 70s, and even back then, you loved all music. You loved yeah. all because it was all, it, it, was, it wasn't just selfish. The song was for yeah. everybody. Everybody yeah. enjoyed it. To, to now, it's like, well, this is my genre. 
this is my thing, or this is, you know, this is, this is what I present to God and, and no one likes it. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's just not, no one buys it. it it's not good because it's not yeah. of God's hand. That's why you can see that. And, and that's why it's not doing anything. And it's trying to do mm-hmm. the things that are separated from, uh, from hatred or jealousy or someone saying what you just said. It's not that. It's the fact that it's really not that. It's not godly. It's something else. And no one mm-hmm. knows what that is. It was, I don't know who this artist was, but it was a guitar player. He was on a big Christian right, uh, rock band. And uh, he just, he said this about a year ago. He said he didn't want to come back to church to do that stuff because he felt, he said, I, he loved God, but he said he didn't feel like that was God, what they, what they were doing. I don't know his name. Wow. Yeah. He was, but he said he didn't, he didn't feel that way. He, and he, yeah. left, he left it. Now he didn't lose his salvation or who he felt, you know, his, his love for God, but he lost his love for doing that part, that music. Yeah. You know, I heard another, another, um, he, you know, most most of these singers, they start out in church singing, right. you know, and then next thing you know, Hollywood gets them and they're off doing their own thing. And I right. remember there was a I can't remember the artist's name, um, but he he was asked he was doing this interview and they asked him, you know, how did you start singing and all this? And he said, I started in church. I was in gospel music. I started there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well. Would you go back to singing in church? And he said, no, I wouldn't. And they asked him, why not? And he said, because I don't think because of the way he looked, all the piercings and everything else that he had going on. Uh-huh. He said, because I don't think the church would accept me the way I look now. You know, uh-huh. and that was like, wow. You know, because even the world knows. <laughs> yeah, the Is world that- knows. It's because religion. It's- there you go. And it's, and, it's a bi- and it's not a business because it doesn't make money anymore. And it doesn't work because God is not in it. That yes. is, you're gonna lost that because there's no comp- nobody has their heart compelled to really serve God. It's just them, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's it. God, that's why I say shows like yours, Monica, and many of that's just gonna take over. I mean, mm-hmm. already start, it's happening now. That's that's why you see like even you know you see just different things taking place now. You know, this is a whole mm-hmm. new world we're in. And and you have to keep evolving. That's why God gives us creation. That's why God gives us faith. You know, mm-hmm. that's what if you had a great heart and you're doing great things, you're gonna continue to build stuff. What you got right now, you got we used to have what I call a uphold, like you know, like something can become clogged mm-hmm. and you can't adapt anything. And it used to be like that. Two thousand twenty four will not be like that. No, I don't think it is. Clogged. Watch, you're gonna see your thing is gonna blow up, Monica. This show, the graceful word, is gonna grow, gonna grow. So many other people's stuff is gonna grow. I'm telling you right now. And the only reason why it's gonna grow is because God can, He can intervene because it's fresh and your art, your heart is open for newness. That's yes. it. You're anywhere with that. People are so <laughs> concerned about people taking their spots. And sometimes that people take your spot, move on. I mean, and you can't, and you can't take anyone's spot. But, but what I'm saying is, sometimes bringing newness on. So that you can see a better thing for yourself. You may you know you may not even know. Sometimes you got to take the back roll to see the the top roll. Something that you mm-hmm. might make more in the back. You will make more. But some mm-hmm. things people are doing is just they're clogging so many whole so many different things from ministers to music to just all kind of stuff. And they just had churches all over the world because what mm-hmm. it is is just called covetousness and greed and people just being and that's and not even about money just just blocking things off because people want things to go that way. And yeah, yeah. I think people hold people out like him or don't want people there like that is because they're afraid of what that person can bring. Mm-hmm. A person's bringing yeah. something good and they're afraid of it. They're not going to let that person intervene and let God mm-hmm. use him to help. They're going to push that person out. And that's why you have um, so much misdirection at church where people don't know the word. Because maybe that guy who looks weird, like John the Baptist, like they said, he looked totally different. He was wild, he was bashful. But people didn't mm-hmm. like that because he was different. He they, bugs. John the Baptist. As long, long as he put some hot sauce on that, right? Right. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. So, you know, what? one of the, um, I'll sum it up, you know, I was watching your your healer video and I mean, what was refreshing, too, was that, you know, there was no gawking of, of all you had all your band members playing, 
and there was none of the guys gawking at the ladies or the girls weren't decently dressed. They, everybody was decent in it. And you were just like, wow, okay, that's fresh that there is some respect there, you know, (laughs) between both sexes, only two people, both sexes, you know, And, and it was just, it was awesome because, you know, and I don't mean this in a, in a stereotypical way, but right you, you hear so much of music from the African-American community where um, pants are, you know, down the middle of their thighs, you know, yeah. girls are just voluptuous and showing things or we're bumping and grinding, you know, it's way too much. Yeah. You know, and then they go, Oh, I want to praise God. And you're just like, wait a minute. I I guess I had to go there because you see it. There is no bumping and grinding in church, you know? Right. You know? And so. That's why I changed it up because I said, Well, you know, everybody, you know, I was going to make the kind of video I was going to make was going to be elegance, it's going to be class because that's how you want to represent God Mm because God is, you know, man, it's up here. (laughs) So what I tried to do is take it and put that. you know, give it a very just a elegant, beautiful look. The girls mm-hmm. look good. They were dressed yeah. right. I was never yeah. gonna put something up there like why you know, their stomachs out and they're you know, there's some wild yeah. stuff. It's wild like, stuff, piercings like, everywhere, you know. Turk, I wasn't gonna do a turn for Jesus uh video. <laughs> yeah. so and you funny. know what? <laughs> and you know what too, for for my listeners that are on, you guys are on Spotify, Amazon and everything, like if you want to go see this video, you would check it out. Okay, Julius is this big bodybuilder type guy, big black guy, right? And so here he is delivering elegant music, totally yes. opposite of him, you, oh, you know, just oh, totally oh. opposite and jazz. So you guys got to check this guy out. You got to check out his song. And uh, he's going to be coming out with an album later on. And Julius, we want to be able to get your... Um, uh, if you have like a website, you know, something that where listeners can go and check you out. They can go to juliusadams.com and check me out there. There you should be able to reach like all my um, uh, digital black platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora's, um, all the necessary, you know, all the stuff that you want to find there. So it's there. Um, it, we, it, it will be going up and down because we're putting new stuff on there, especially like this interview will be on there, some other things. Okay. Um, so yeah, juliusadams.com. Um, and now is that where we could find, um, when you decide to go on tour now is will that information? We'll be dropping that information in the beginning of February. Okay. Yep. Okay. About that. All right, Julius. I always ask a couple of favorite questions before I let my guests go. What's your favorite type of food? And I know this answer already. <laughs> um, man, uh, my favorite type of food is, uh, I will tell you, uh, Italian. And Italian. A, a Mexican. Mexican food is my favorite, though, but because I love it. I do both. So uh-huh. I would say Italian food and Mexican food are my best, are my favorite. And I go to Chicago uh-huh. like that all the time. And that's it. That's oh, my, my God. That's my point. Oh my gosh! Favorite season? Favorite season? Winter. I just don't like winter. the snow. I love winter because I'm How always. How do you like winter but don't like the snow? <laughs> <laughs> that don't go. Because <laughs> I, I like holiday seasons. I like how the uh, holidays okay. into it, and then because I'm not a heat. I don't like hot weather. Hot weather. I don't like anything over ninety. Uh-huh. Anything over ninety. Oh no. <laughs> 83 is pushing it. 83. Oh my gosh. It has to be between 30 and 70. Oh my gosh. You know what? No, no. We can't be friends. That's just too cold. No, 30. <laughs> All right. All time favorite favorite movie. Oh, um, Great Outdoors. Okay. That one is good. I have seen that one. I have that in my collection. I have a On lot. Fire of- Stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, yeah. Outdoors, great, great outdoors, um, and Christmas vacation. Oh, you there you go, Chevy Chase, huh? 
Yeah, boy, we have some we had some Chevy Chase houses out there this year. I don't know about uh, you guys over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just tell you, those are my two favorite. Those are my those are my two favorite. I watch those all the time. Yeah, I do eighties night, eighties night. No uh, way. Yeah, I do eighties night every summer. Um, so I, I watch all those movies too. Can't buy me love. Um, Breakfast Club. Um, wow. You should do an 80s night music night at the park oh, in, in Pierre. Don't tell me that. Oh, that was, that's it right there. All there you go. Time. See, you need to hook up with your guys and do 80s night in the park and just do that's some crazy. Christian jams. That's what's up. Oh, man. Yeah, so I see. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah, Monica said it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, some yes. Andre Crouch, uh, you know, all of them. Just grab some songs and all the way through it. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Yep, man. there you go. Well, well Andre, that. it's been a blessing to have you here. Um, it was really great to hear your up and coming, and your heart is in this. That you're you're one of those musicians where we can and singers that we could go ahead and say, you know what, this is one to follow because his heart is in the right place. And to continue yeah. to pray over you, you know, that you stick close to the Lord, you keep drawing near to him and that you don't let fame and fortune, you know, pull you away from what his fame and fortune has, which is always better than what the world has to offer. Yeah. And um, so we just wanted to say thanks for coming on here. Thanks for um, sharing your story. And we really look forward to hearing this album drop and, um, meeting the guys come on here let me know when you're ready to bring the guys and you know, we'll get them on i will for sure monica thank you so much um this has been a great interview you're awesome That's thank, all. You. thank you so much all right god bless god bless well thanks for joining us on coffee break with god a podcast for anyone who wants to grow in their faith and discover the amazing ways that God works in our lives. I hope you enjoyed our inspiring conversations with our guests from different backgrounds, perspectives, and walks of life. So whether you need a shot of inspiration or a dash of encouragement or even a scoop of reflection, I hope this podcast is your perfect companion for a coffee break with God. Till next time, who's up for a second cup of coffee? Hey everyone, I just want to take a quick minute. I hope that you're enjoying this episode. I really appreciate you taking the time and listening to my podcast. Wherever you listen to your favorite, I'm honored to be able to share that time with you. But hey, I wanted to let you know, I have my own webpage on Captivate. And I'm going to leave the link in the description below. But if you were to join me on my page you have some perks that are coming to you what kind of perks you say well if you would subscribe for eight bucks a month i will give you bonus content my extra show that i have and then on top of that you'll get 24 hour early access to all the shows that the public already gets and then I'll even throw in an extra perk. If you have your own business, you could send me the name of your business and I'll shout it out on this podcast at the cost of eight bucks. It's a deal in itself. I understand that if you don't want to subscribe just yet, hey, just buy me my favorite drink. I have two of them actually. One is a cold coffee first thing in the morning. I love a caramel macchiato. And my other favorite summertime drink is a lotus banana blueberry chai. Oh, that's my favorite drink. Just hit the tip button and go ahead and leave me a tip and just buy me a drink. All right, with all of that, I just want to say thank you. And let's get back to the show.